Welcome, welcome. Ziggy1x here with another near reincarnation video. And it is time. <laughs> you knew they were going to do this to us. You knew they were just going to make them so darn diggity darn good. And uh, <laughs> I had a lot of fun making that intro. So I'm not going to take too much time on this, but I want to go over some of my thoughts on the banner and precisely why you shouldn't pull right now. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to hype these units to the moon. I am just going to sing their praises. I'm going to say that 2B is now the Celebuary killer for generic damage across all elements and all this other stuff, and that Brother Near is going to be able to outdo everybody in Arena because he's everything and all this stuff. And then I'm going to say, but don't pull on the banner. How am I going to circle logic my way into this pickle, this pretzel? Let's get into it and find out. Okay, let's first take a look at our girl 2B here. So, you can see right off the bat, now this is, mind you, at level 100 at fully awakening four. So all the 30% stats increased and everything showing up on her character sheet here. She looks great. That is top tier attack, really high defense actually, great HP, uh, no bonus agility, and pretty, pretty standard across the board for everything else. So the first thing we look at with these damage dealers is what is their character skill? I'm not going to look at that just yet. I'm going to uh, I'm going to hold, and we're going to look at these other things. Here's the first problem with 2B, and I'm just going to get this right out of the way. This bold vigor is locked behind Awakening 3. That is damage up by 30% when your HP is above 70%. This is an excellent bold vigor passive, uh, among the highest we have in the game. So it's very good. It's very powerful, but you have to get her to Awakening 3, which means 4, quattro. Four copies of the costume. Four. That is probably two pities worth of pulls right there. That's a lot. So let's set that aside. Let's just assume that you have her at Awakening Zero. You're losing those 30% stats, and you are also uh, losing that 30% Bold Vigor. Okay, let's talk about the rest of her. Liquid Swiftness. All allies of the same affinity, which is water for her case, will get a 5% increased cooldown rate on their weapon skills. This is really something. This is really, really a useful utility because the more attacks, the more weapon skills you can get off in the game, the more damage you're doing, the faster you're charging up your character skill. This is an incredible new ability and this is a brand new ability class. So I'm really looking forward to seeing more of this. The next thing we have is her Vigor. Attack up by 25%. That's solid, that's great. So her stats that you're seeing here are inflated by that 25%. It's not added to the Awakening stats, it's just added to her base base stats. So now let's get to the Crim de la Crim. Obviously, the costume looks fabulous. I love the way it does the callbacks to the original 2B that we got in Near Reincarnation. A lot of the same really nice flair and design. She's got that long kind of tail on her coat. Um, she's still got the headband in her hair and everything. It looks great. Looks absolutely beautiful. Again, mwah, chef's kiss to the art team. Now let's look at the draw. Okay, 200% damage times four. So immediately, this may be a turnoff for some because I was comparing her to Celebratory Yuri. Now, Celebratory Yuri has a 200% uh, times five as the base. So immediately, we think, wait a minute. Celebuary is still doing more damage on the base end. Here's where things change, and I'll explain my reasoning behind this. 200% damage four times instead of five, which is kind of the gold standard right now. When your HP is above 50%, 50% or higher, damage up the higher your HP is. This is called dynamic bold vigor, meaning that the higher her HP is, it starts at 50%, but the higher you go, the more damage you're doing up to 200%. Okay, so that means if she is at 100% HP when she does this attack, she is going to be doing a 600% damage multiplier per hit. <laughs> that is stupid. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. Uh, Yuri caps at 400%. So there's going to be a couple... So I'm going to get into this a little bit here. There's going to be circumstances where a celebratory Yuri will still be a little bit better, but in most cases... 2B is going to be much better, and I will explain why. 
So first of all, this damage multiplier is, is tied to Bold Vigor. So if you have a way of keeping your team topped off, and she does have a way, by the way, on her own weapon ability where she heals herself 15% every time she uses that ability. So she's constantly kind of topping herself off a little bit. If you have a tank, if you have a healer in your party, things like this, I like the way these kits are built because what they're doing is they're encouraging diversity in your build, in your team. So this character needs some form of healing, unless you're just getting out there and killing everything in one hit, which is not typically the case for the most challenging content. So what does this mean? You're going to have a diverse team. You're going to probably need some kind of form of healing or a dedicated healer. Um, and you're going to want to basically be feeding her as much HP as possible to keep her topped off so that when her character skill comes around and also her passive, Bold Vigor, comes around, she's going to be doing maximum, maximum damage. So here's the thought on this girl right here. Why do I think she is so important? Well, we're getting increasingly more difficult content, and what we're seeing with these new enemies is that they have a lot of HP, and they have a lot of defense. So all of a sudden, defense breaks, defense crushes are coming back into fashion again. You're seeing characters being dusted off who had that crush ability, that defense crush ability, who didn't get used for a while because our damage dealers could cap on their own. They didn't need a defense break. But now with the added defense and all these other elements being introduced into the game that make the enemies a little bit chonkier, we want the defense breaks. We want the higher multipliers and all these other things. So this 600%, what does this mean? This means that veteran players and the people who are in that tippity top 1% of, uh, of, of accounts, we saw that on the JP live stream, there really aren't a whole lot of the player base that are in just that top echelon of players. It's about 1%. And so these guys will benefit from having her as essentially a Swiss Army knife because she's not element locked. That 600% multiplier, unlike pretty much every single costume we have gotten, damage dealing costume since Celebratory Yuri, has been in some way, shape, and form locked to a specific element. Their damage is typically increased by a significant margin if their main hand weapon is their proficient element. So in the case of just most recently, we had Celebratory Yuzuki and Celebratory Seraphah. Yuzuki was tied exclusively to Dark. Even his passives were tied to Dark, his damage multiplying passives, and Seraphah was tied to Light. In less of a degree, but she was still tied to Light. And so what this girl does for us is this is why I'm comparing her so much to Celebratory Yuri, because Yuri's damage increased when she just simply had an attack buff applied to her. This was great because it's so easy to get an attack buff on a character, fire off that attack buff, now she's doing double, double damage for a character skill, and boom, she's melting stuff. This is the second incarnation of that. We may be seeing more costumes like this down the road, and maybe ones with five hit attached to them, probably, because power creep. But this is, in a sense, a form of power creep. And what you're seeing here is you're seeing that now going to the lower tier players, the players who don't have as well-developed accounts, they're gonna be able to now hit those damage caps much, much, much easier because the multipliers are higher. So what this is going to allow is this is going to allow for a single damage dealing unit that can be used across every element in the game, every element. So the biggest drawback of the elemental specialists is that they were typically the providence of individuals who either had a lot of resources to dunk into them, they paid for it, other things like this. It was great for this in the sense that it added diversity to the game, but it also blocked out the good majority of the player base. 2B is a catch-all character. She can do it all, she can do it across all elements, and she does a lot of damage, like a lot of damage, and she's pretty chunky. She's got survivability and everything. We also have a bundle going on in the shop right now that's 18,000 gems for 25 bucks. And I've never seen a deal like that. That is, it's free gems, but 18,000 gems is no, is no joke. Usually the $25 bundle at max usually included about 6,000 gems. So this is three times more than a good bundle that we get before. So if you're, <clears throat> if you're in any way interested in investing in and supporting this game, that's the bundle to pick up right there. Pick it up, tell the developers that you're interested in more good deals like that, we'll go from there. So she opens up the playing field for 
newer players as well. She does so much damage that she actually elevates the entire account by herself. She's an excellent pickup. If you have the resources to go after her, go after her. She is fantastic. I am going to wait though, and I'll get to that in a minute. Let's next talk about Brother Near. So enough gushing about 2B, phenomenal. Let's go back over here to our boy, Brother Near. What does this guy bring to the table? Well, you can see that his stats are, his HP is good, his defense is lower, his attack is lower. Everything looks pretty good across the board, but here's where things start to shine. Now with him, I'm gonna start on his character skill. 180% times five. So this is, this is towards the lower end of what we're seeing now for characters who can actually do some damage, but also offer some other utility to the game. This isn't really high damage multipliers, but it's nice that it's a five chain. You can actually use that to chain up for other damage dealers. Reduces defense by 20% for 30 seconds. I would have liked to have seen a 45 second on there, but that's fine. 20% for 30 seconds and increases wind damage. One enemy will receive by 20%. Now we've got a wind support specialist, which is ideal for doing big damage to a water enemy or in the water subjugation. Okay, so we have a support unit here. Great, that's awesome. And now let's go look at his abilities. Fleet foot, that's odd. Oh, 50% fleet foot. We've never seen that before. <laughs> Fractured Noel and Fractured Demos have 40% fleet foot. Okay. So he's got 10% more, which means, as Farplane pointed out, and all credit to him on this one, he pointed out that now you can use a single subjugation weapon and a single gotcha weapon, which the subjugation has 30% timed agility, and the gotcha weapon typically has 20% timed agility. And with two weapons, leaving the third slot open, you can max the timed agility at 100%. Okay, that's cool. That means you don't need as much from the support side of things and other things. Again, I'm basically just repeating word for word what Farplane said right there, so go check out his video. He has some really good thoughts on it. Tempest Swiftness. All allies with the same affinity will receive that 5% increased cooldown if everybody's using wind main hand weapons. So he's doing the same thing that 2B was doing except for wind. Wind is very powerful, especially in arena. So this is good. Now let's look at this next one. This is the one that's locked behind Awakening 3. So again, four copies of the costume. Damage up by 30% on chains of three or more. That's a big pursuit buff. It's not as big as Yuzuki. Yuzuki is a 50%, but Yuzuki is not a speed demon like this guy. Yuzuki is a good turret, but this guy's better in arena. And 30% is 30% damage multiplying into the damage that you would have been doing. If you were gonna be doing 100 damage, you're gonna be doing 130, so on and so forth. It is a big, big damage multiplier. But again, locked behind Awakening 3. Now, do you need that third Awakening to make uh, Brother Near here viable in Arena? No, you don't, actually. Do you need the third Awakening to make 2B viable? No, you don't. You're doing a flat 30% more damage with 2B, and you're doing a flat 30% more damage with Brother Near, but that's not critical because the other things that they bring with their kits are so doggone valuable. So if you are on a budget, if you are a newer player, or if you just were completely taxed by the anniversary, you can get away with getting one of each of these units and do just fine. You get this guy up to level 90, he's gonna be great. Now we skipped over the weapons, and by the way, I'm gonna say right here, this guy is primo top dog in arena right now for an agility rusher. That third slot can be used for an agility weapon like, like Gale Sword or something along those lines, EX Gale Sword, um, because <laughs> he's already got all of his timed agility, so you could, just, you could just beef up his agility everywhere else and make it really work. Let's take a look at his weapon real quickly because this is very interesting. Now it has two barrier skills, which has become pretty common. You're gonna have to refine these guys to get that. But let's look at this. 20% for 60 seconds timed agility. Okay, that's where his first source is coming from. So in theory, you could use the subjugation wind gun and now you're at 100% timed agility. Or if you wanna use another sniper in your team who's also using a wind weapon and is a gun user, you could give it to them and give him something else. Next thing, increase wind damage by 30%. This is great. I would have almost liked to have seen on this more the uh, the uh, Tempest Haste than, because then the, and I get the idea behind the snipers coming out and doing damage first and then having the slower cooldowns, 
But how cool would that be to have the Tempest Haste so that your cooldown reduction time is increased by 10% or decreased by 10%. He's got his passive, which is increasing, decreasing it by another 5%. And now you're beating literally everybody else out because now you've got maximum cooldown plus 5%. I don't know, I feel like this is a missed opportunity. 30% though is very good, and I'm not gonna dunk on this weapon for that. The next thing is, is that we've got pretty standard damage here, 45% times five on ability two, 14 seconds, six, is that 14 or 16? 15 seconds, yeah, 14 and 15 seconds, and we got 55 times four. This is pretty standard, which means this is a very, 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 very viable weapon. And if you do run with a gun user, like a, uh, like a uh, Plague Doctor Demos, then what he's doing with the gun is he's boosting all the wind damage in the party. So you could very viably run a mono wind party with he, Demos, uh, Lacrima Leviathan, all these others, and you're good to go. So this is a great weapon. Now let's look at 2B's weapon real quickly here, and it will be very quick. 90% times 5, but increases by 40% when your HP is over 80%. So this is going to be doing a lot of damage. Next ability. 60% times four when your character is equipped with a proficient weapon, recover 15% of your HP. That's the HP that I was talking about there. And then the next thing is gonna be attack up by 15%. That's a bad ability, I'm sorry. That's just a bad ability. It should have been Liquid Boon. If this was gonna be a Primo Primo weapon, it should have been Liquid Boon or Bold Vigor. And um, then we have skill cooldown time by 10% or reduced by 10%. So that's a really good ability. But the second, the first ability, I don't like it. I actually think that that brings the weapon down significantly by my estimation. I think it'll still be a very useful weapon, but I think that, oh, what do I want to say? I want to say that Celebratory Marie's weapon is better. Uh, definitely Abyssal Mirror uh, 063Y and Yuletide Griff, their weapons are better than this. There's a lot of better weapons than this out here right now. So this kind of falls into the, not S, but kind of A-ish tier, maybe the low A tier for me, but it does have a lot of attack attached to it. So that is my thoughts on the banner. Now let's talk about why you should not pull. You should not pull because there has now been a precedent set by the developers. They have snuck in now twice, one more sneaky than the other time, a second banner. The first one was for Persona 5. Now that was a event that they hyped up, they announced the units, and then they snuck in Crow at the end, and Crow is is incredible. He is really good. <laughs> and so I made a whole video about him. I think he's amazing. But he got snuck in in week two and kind of caught everybody off guard. The next thing was the celebratory year two banner. And that was the one we just got done with. Nobody was expecting that. There was no precedent set for it at all. We had already had three celebratory banners where there was never a second banner that came around. And then they snuck in the second banner on us, and it had arguably one of the best units in the game on it in Celeb F66X. So what does this mean for this banner? I'm holding. I did a couple pulls. I got Brother Near. Very, very thrilled about that. But I'm holding on to my gem stash right now because I want to see what happens next. This banner is open for a month which means that we got plenty of opportunities to pull on it. We're gonna have the monthly reset very soon, and we're gonna get a ton of stuff for that that we can use to pull into it. But I still caution waiting at least, bare minimum, a week to pull on this, maybe two, because the last, uh, the surprise sell of banner came out, it was announced 11 days after the first one had dropped, which means that it landed about two weeks after the first one had dropped. So that's what I would wait for. I'd wait to see what the developers would do on that. I really do suspect we're gonna be getting a second one, but I could be wrong. And if I am wrong, then I'm wrong, and you still get to pull on this banner. But my, my strong advice, I strongly caution everybody to hold off on this one. It also sends a message to the developers that we were paying attention and that we were a little punchy, a little shy from pulling on this one initially. And if they see smaller values in the first and second week, and then all of a sudden when there should have been a second come out, but it didn't or it does, they see a bunch of pulls, that's gonna tell them, oh, okay, they're they're on to us. They're, they're, they picked up on this. Now, if it was to come around in the third week or something, that would just be a, a dick move. And <laughs> I really don't think they would do that, but if they did, I mean, wow, that would be, that would be so low. 
Anyways, so that is my thoughts on the banner review. I'm excited for it. I want to pull on it really, really bad because again, I want to be just it's to be. But I also really would love to put her into my party. And basically, she replaces Yuri as far as just that Swiss Army knife utility. And she's a good upgrade for Yuri. So I'm thrilled about that. But anywho, that is my thoughts. I'm going to leave it here. I hope all of you are having a wonderful time with the near collaboration. I'm still hoping for a new event because not a whole lot happened with, uh, with the events. So guys, throw a new event our way. That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. I'd like to see more. Anyways, but we'll see what happens with that. In the meantime, enjoy the game. Peace out, y'all. Have a good one. Talk to you next time. Bye.